Hello, this is a tournament game played online in the 49 Prague Ambassador Cup between a 3Q player as white and a 2Q player as black. The 2Q player has a 3 down account on KGS, so he's probably more active online than in uh, real tournaments uh, in Europe. So the game was quite uh, close, in the end black won by 12 and a half, but in the beginning uh, white overplayed quite early in Fuseki, so uh, black managed to establish an early lead. Then it went kind of peaceful till the end. So let's see if white had any chance to turn the game around. So the game starts very calm with star points, both for black and white. The Josekis are usually very simple and a lot of early sun sun invasion can happen here. But they play old school. So Kakari from the outside, corner approach coming at R6. Nowadays we see a lot of uh, early sun sun invasion in one of the corners of course it's pretty much the same thing now white can block either way and then of course white can choose to invade uh, black's corners as well many professional games or, or top ai games start like this this is the the trend so black plays old school now white already played the first uh, let's say questionable move usually uh, this kind of p6 the cap its play when white already has a middle side extension in place at k4 Otherwise, it's natural for white to defend calm at O3, or if white wants to be a bit more aggressive, pincer R8. Now, playing O3, calm is fine, uh, black can slide and extend back to go for the base Ichaseki, then white can attack the top right corner or, of course, invade the corner right away. Uh, also, black can consider the R4 attach instead of the slide, which is more trendy. So we have another modern Joseki either like this or go up. This is also very common nowadays. And of course, um, why can think about a pincer like R8 or maybe a pincer high at uh, Q9. These are usually the options uh, in the early stage of the game. Now, if, uh, for example, black plays a move in the top left corner very tight and solid to prevent the sun's sun invasion, and white has a sun and say, so three star points on the bottom side, that black approach is r6. In this position, it's okay to go for the cap move at p6 in order to set up a big moyo or a big framework on the bottom side. So if this Joseki follows, uh, there's nothing to complain for white. But in the actual game, if we have the same thing going on, so black invades the corner naturally, then if white blocks q3 and this Joseki will uh, happen, then even if white extends at k4, it's a little bit slow. So now black can just jump in at p2 and it's difficult for white to set up a moyo. Now if uh, white blocks at q2, black will just invade the bottom side and extend one way or the other in order to fix a base. So this is again somewhat uh, not so great for white. Therefore, uh, white blocks uh, separates at r4, which makes sense. Black will push. Uh, why could act actually no be here? Then black can follow up the Joseki like this. And now again, white can think about the pincer on the right side. This is similar to a Joseki where uh, white plays the extension at R, I mean the pincer at R4, R8 uh, right away. So, I mean, if white plays R8, black goes in the corner, then we have this follow up. <clears throat> it's just that R8, it's a P6 in the actual game. Now the way white played the honey, it's also fine, honey in the head of two stones. And then white can follow up with the honey in the corner first. This way we'll take away uh, black liberties, then white can continue with an Atari, and Atari from the outside. Black of course can uh, capture this stone, or play Atari first on the outside, then go for this capture. But still, uh, black ends up a little bit over concentrated in the corner, and white's thickness, it's quite fine. So this way, white got a pretty decent result after all. So that's a pretty fourth sequence. It can happen. Now white simply get ahead, then black pushes along, very good, and push one more time. Black doesn't want to play the Hane and Tsugi in Sente. Even though if uh, black does this, now black can play some other big points like C5 or approach on the right side in order to uh, ruin white's influence. But black can push again, which is fine, and then extend on the right side. 
And I think something like that is going to happen. Yeah, Kema to extend towards the center. But here, Black can use the two space jump, R9. This is a bit safer, being on the third line and just set up a base with a two space jump. So when uh, Black plays this Kema, White can descend first in center at S4, threatening to jump in the corner. Usually, Black will just block and secure the corner. Then, White can jump in at R10. This is a pretty aggressive way to start a fight here and try to use the wall and then extend for a base towards the corner. So this way, white gets a, a solid formation on the right side. <clears throat> now the way the game developed, um, yeah, white can also play this cap move in order to set up the Moy on the bottom, make it bigger, but it's still good to play S4 first. And on this cap move, black should just extend to space jump to Q11. So let's see. Yeah, black played a little bit too conservative the Kema on the third line. It's still okay to go to space high because now the gap is much more narrow between Q16 and Q11. So white is not going to be very uh, comfortable to invade at R14, but attack from the outside. So uh, black played R10 and now white jumps in right away. Uh, this is an overplay. There is not so much space between the corner and the extension on the right side. So here we have only one, two, three, four, five uh, intersections distance. So it's more interesting to invade between the top stones because there are 11 lines between them. So more space. And in general, you want to play in the most open area in the beginning of the game. So this can happen. The basic Joseki or invade the sun sun right away. And if black wants to keep the right, it's not a problem. White uh, got some um, uh, base in the top. So white came inside at R12 and here black should pincer. Then white has to go out and black can come out between the groups as well. Or if black needs to, or he has to connect under, he can use S12. So black is not in danger. This way, uh, white can slide in the corner and fix a base. So the invasion, uh, we can consider it succeed on the right side. But still, as a direction of play, it's more interesting to play in the top. Now, white can also go for a tiny base with a one space jump, then go up and extend like this. Playing the one space jump, uh, white doesn't have a base yet. So black can just take uh, the R14, which happened. So now white is supposed to jump again. <clears throat> but then black will jump between the groups and also ruin the moyo. Now, if white tries to cover here, it's not so easy. Actually, black doesn't even have to answer. Uh, black can go for a big point. So white played O16, trying to surround the two stones in the top, but black doesn't have to worry about that. Jump again. This is very good. Separate white's groups. So now white is looking for a way to uh, fix the top. And here, instead of jump, it's better to play the clamp just one time and then extend in the top uh, to look for a base. <clears throat> Many times when uh, white plays the clamp, black will block, white will atari, black will connect, and then white has time to extend. It's very important to extend in the top. If white leaves the position like this, even though the stones are pretty much connected, black will take away the extension in the top, so white feels uh, still a little bit uh, floating. And when white extends uh, this way, it's very narrow and it feels uncomfortable. So black took uh, f18. Now here, white plays another uh, very active move, the submarine approach. It's kind of overplayish to, to go all the way there. It's good enough to play c10 in this case. Also, uh, it's possible to approach at c14, even though it feels a little bit slow, like uh, one step behind when black already has a stone at f17. Because black can play the kick and then take away the extension. But it's not really necessary to go b15 or b16 in this case. It's normal to play an approach move like c10. And if black goes in the top, the next move can be c13 or the slide all the way to b16. So here, uh, black has several ways to react. But black decided to keep the corner. Uh, black can put pressure like this. So give up the corner to go for outside thickness and then extend in the top and it can be all the way to L16 because this will put a lot of pressure on uh, white's team group. Oops, I jump ahead a little bit here. 
Now, the Joseki that can follow, when White plays the wedge, it's cut. This shows more fighting spirit. Then push in the corner, and the sequence is pretty much forced. White can play all these forcing moves from the outside, but Black already got the corner, and Black can come inside. And also try to uh, ruin White's thickness. So, White eventually makes an extension like this, or captures a stone, but... Black just develops more. So black keeps the corner on a pretty large scale and also uh, gets inside the left. This would be a little bit stronger resistance from black. Uh, normally white simply goes no B, black defends, white extends. And now black can enter the left or the bottom or sun sun. So white tried to, to damage more with this wedge and it shows a, a little more fighting spirit in this case. But anyway, yeah, black can consider uh, put pressure this way, give up the corner and extend in the top. So the Joseki would fit this given position very well for black. Now we have uh, a very peaceful variation, white extends, this is the right extension, 3 space jump, very good. Black comes in, uh, black can still extend in the top, somewhere around here, to put a lot of pressure on white. If white decides to make uh, life this way, it's a little bit uh, over concentrated and then black still has center to jump on the left side now it's obvious that when white plays d6 he wants to set up the moyo and use his m3 uh, wall but it's good enough to play c5 kick and then extend f4 because when black extends on the left side for a base this is narrow it's only two space jump so it's a little bit uh, over concentrated and white still builds a lot on the bottom side uh, in a natural way with this move, uh, also white can consider the pincer, but with this one, black will hane, that's natural, and white can block or go up, and this way probably white was hoping for this kind of joseki to increase the bottom side, which is playable in this case. Also, uh, white can block. Now, this is the, the farmer's head shape, which is generally bad, but black has two cutting points to uh, fix now. And in this case, I guess black will go for the outside. White extends. And there is still no, not much room for black to extend towards the left side. So black will probably jump again. So this way, white can build uh, the bottom side on a really large scale port line while black is just floating in the middle. So in this case, the D6 is playable. But I'm not a big fan of this attach and the block in general. So white went up. Black attaches. Block the corner. Pull back. And now black played the uh, sorry white played a very uh, submissive move. It should be d3 because when uh, black hane in the corner, white can block. Uh, the push is not a problem because the ladder works. And when white plays solid here at d3, black needs to fix the base on the left side. Then white can add another move on the bottom, probably this one, and cover in order to expand the moyo, or just extend uh, like j3 or k3 so this kind of move e4 it's play when black has other stones on the bottom like f3 f4 and the cut it's an issue but here it wasn't the case that there are no black stones at f4 or in that area to threaten a push and cut so now it's very comfortable for black to play the hane and on the hane <clears throat> why should descend because black will still go back to c9 if black continues on the bottom side uh white can attack the base Playing this kind of move, threatening the cut, then push, then hane. So black's group is on the run now. Therefore, it's quite big for white to go down at c2. With m2, white is really hoping to enclose a lot on the bottom, but now Atari comes at c2. And the shape is quite uh, heavy when uh, white connects. This results into an empty triangle. Feels uh, generally bad. So a uh, shape to avoid. Now black is trying to reduce coming from this side. Uh, white should consider the shoulder hit block. Then when black pushes here, just drop down. When push again, Hane. When Hane, uh, cut may be dangerous. So give up a stone to keep Sente. And then expand the, the box. So this way, white builds more on the bottom side. Let's see what happened in the actual game. Also, uh, on this move, Hane works, turn, Hane again. Yeah, the box is bigger again. 
Oh, so we have, yeah, this kind of jump. Black plays on the sector line to reduce. That's a good idea. White still wants to keep most of the territory. Now this honey, it's a bit too much. Normally, uh, locally, black should just play N1. On the honey, white can throw in. Then when black captures a stone, white will no be, and the push is no longer an option, because after Atari, black can't connect. Black needs to defend around here, so white can catch the two stones. Or leave it like this and connect after. But if black connects, white will capture everything. So that creates a shortage of liberties, or Dame Tsumari. And if black keeps pushing, uh, white can Atari several times. Then Atari from behind, and again, black has to connect here, and white captures everything back. So in the end, there is no reducing there. So you should be very... Um, pay attention to this kind of tactics. Because if just block, black connects, and then white needs another move. So black destroyed two points in center and created these points for himself instead of being punished. It's an overplay that was unpunished and that becomes a great Suji. Now on the Hane, um, white can pull back and when black goes down, white cuts and fights. When black connects up, white protects. This way, uh, black managed to reduce more. The nobi is very good. White has to protect. So in the end, the bottom side didn't uh, become so large for white. Therefore, black is looking good at this stage of the game. And now, white has to focus in other areas on the board. This move is not really necessary. Black can just connect to the right with a one space jump. So now let's see what happened in the top. Yeah, black jumps and connects. Uh, K16 should be played at K17. Then, if black plays a one space jump, white can bump and jump out to uh, increase the top more. Playing on the fourth line is very easy for black to slide. Well, white sacrifices a stone in order to block, but there is still Aji in the top. Ane, uh, let's see. Normally here, why should play a peep to make sure that the stones are connected. This is Sente. Then, yeah, that, that turn is not small. Ah, Descent here, it's also Sente. And what else? Maybe try to separate these stones in order to enclose more points in the center. So, yeah, Hane, ah yeah, the Hane was sent there, I mean the turn, black blocked. Yeah, Hane and connect is got here, black should go down, uh, sorry, white should go down, descend on the second line, because next is threatening to jump in the corner. So if black plays S2, white doesn't have to play S3. And if black plays S3, white can leave the position like this, or later on play Hane and connect in center, then jump on the second line to destroy more points. Playing the Hane here and connect, uh, this is Gote for white. Black is alive in the corner already. Well, it's big for black to go down and it's also big for white to play the Hane, but for now, black can play away. So here, black is trying to reduce the top. Uh, why should play a one space jump to make sure the stones are connected on the right, black defense, and then protect the top. This way, the game is still kind of long and relatively close. So white protected here, then black plays a peep, and now black cuts that stone. This is huge. This is actually the difference uh, in the game of 12 points, because those points came out of nowhere for black. So the game could have been on the edge. Now it really got uh, easy for black. So we have uh, small center moves. Instead of this kind of move, why should actually block here? Because there is no more Atari, Atari going on, and white is aiming to cut two stones. So with this move, black will protect, and this means white defended in center. This is center too. Then monkey jump to destroy some points. Ane. These are all center moves, but probably still hard to catch up and uh, win the game. So losing R12 was really the key deciding moment of the game. It's better not to play moves like D1, because later on you can use the cut and then go down and then Atari and then throw in and connect and 
cut here. So there are lots of cut threads that white can use. Once you play the Hane and black connects, no more threads anymore. Everything is gone. And anyway, black is not going to play d1. Because if black plays d1 and white blocks, black has to play b2 also. So it's not urgent to play d1 for white either. These kind of details are really important. Uh, not necessary to play the vital point here. Just Hane. And if black makes the mistake to block, then you have Atari. And you can go for a co-kill. So black will always play q1 and leave it like this. But this can wait too. I mean, these are also uh, good moves to play as Cotrets. Here why should Atari, Atari again, and then protect. Build more points like this and reduce uh, black a little more. So really small end game left. Probably uh, white was overwhelmed by the fact that black is playing as a 3 down on KHS. So he just showed too much uh, respect to his opponent. And in a way played a bit more submissive than he was supposed to. But if uh, white managed to keep this stone connected at R12, the game can be extremely close. So I hope you enjoyed this review and learn a lot and focus more in the uh, next tournament. Bye bye.